the previous speakers. So Tara, if I could maybe go to you first and uh, ask you to address your topic, collaboration for change and scaling impact. Thank you, Justin. Um, just looking now to make sure I've got the, the systems working for me here. Can you see my slides, Justin? Yeah, we can. It's not on slide view though, Tara. It's we can see your 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 next slides down the left hand side. Okay, one second, and I'll just adjust that, and you might confirm that's okay. Yeah, for you. we are good to go, Tara. Fantastic. Thank you, Justin. Uh, good morning, everybody. And it gives me an absolutely great pleasure to be talking to you today about Origin Green and to share some insights that we're after gathering from Irish farmers that we work with, with over 320 Irish food and drink companies that are members of Origin Green and represent 90% of our exports and from the top markets that we serve as well. And I want to share with you how we've been able to act on many of those insights that we've gathered. And we've done that through a very unique system of collaboration that exists across our supply chain. And finally, I'd like to take an opportunity to share with you our vision for the future on both the challenges and on the opportunities ahead. And Justin, as you reminded me at the beginning, I want to do all of that in 15 minutes. So I'll run through a lot of information with you. First of all, I want to just take a very brief opportunity to introduce Borbia to those of you who may not know it. Um, obviously, we were set up 25 years ago by the Department of Agriculture, um, and we work today with over 50,000 Irish farmers, with around 1,500 food and drink and horticulture companies, from artisan companies to multinationals at home and abroad. And our clear goal all of the time is to bring Ireland's outstanding food and drink and horticulture to the world and focus really on enabling the growth and sustainability of producers. So for those who probably know at this stage our headquarters is in Dublin, but we have a network of 15 offices all over the world that stretch from Dubai to Dusseldorf, from Tokyo to Madrid, but interestingly our two largest offices today are in London and in Shanghai. Uh, John already gave a number of these figures, so I won't uh, spend too much time on it, but our agri-food industry, it uh, encompasses primary production as well as the processing side of it. Our exports are at a record level for 2019 at over 13 billion, and it did cap a record of a decade of extraordinary growth, where the value, as John said, was after increasing by 67%. And I guess that growth has been achieved through sustained incremental increases on value and volume across the food and drink categories, and again, spread to 180 different markets around the world. But I guess there's, there's one note I would suggest to people to reflect on, and I think it's the theme of my presentation throughout, is that as an industry, if we want to go fast, it's much easier to do things alone and do it um, as quickly as one might, might, might want to, I guess. But the magic of what Ireland's food and drink industry has been around doing it together. And I think when we're looking to stretch to 180 different markets, we do want to go far, and the importance of doing that together can't be uh, overstated. And I guess in doing that, though, for Borbia, if we're looking at success, we have to do this through prioritizing. We have to know what matters most and we have to be able to marshal the limited resources that we have to their best use. And what we've done is identified four key strategies and priorities within that that drive everything we do between this three year period, which has been a very volatile period between 2019 and 2021. And I guess I'm going to very briefly bring you through those four different priorities and then touch very, very quickly on the, the key theme of today. But I suppose at the helm of what we do, and this really signifies the commercial focus of, of our world, it lies in driving success and growth in the market. And here we detail our plans of driving business through market preparation, lead generation and relationships relationships and that's the foundation. The second priority we have is around insight to power that growth and that looks at the central role of better thinking and it's that better thinking is delivering the better results to our stakeholders and that's a central role for insight across the organization and going beyond just the consumer but to customers to channels and you'll see that flavor coming through all of the presentation. The third priority is building our reputation for growth and that details around how we go about building our reputation. And again, Justin, when you're exporting 90% of what you produce to 180 markets around the world, it really matters what other people think of you. And I guess we think that the Origin Green has provided a pivotal role in driving a differentiation and a relevance for Irish food and drink at a customer and at a consumer level. And then our fourth priority, leading through people, that brings a focus on and clarity to our plans for the talented and ambitious and passionate people who work in the industry as we look to foster entrepreneurship and also then to lean out and reach out to the new generations of people who in time will become the future of Ireland's vibrant food and drink industry. And if I touch very briefly on the impact of COVID and all of this, 
this, I guess it's been to underpin all of these priorities with a digital platform as well. But I guess as an export focused food and drink industry, we have to be very cognizant of the emerging global macro trends that shape our customers and our consumers and their purchasing decision of Irish food and drink. And Borbia obviously continues to support the industry and to grow exports. We're seeing an increasingly complex global trading environment that shapes the, in the near term, as John mentioned, by Brexit, global trade disputes, which have increasingly focused on food and drink products. But then in addition, you've had COVID-19, the pandemic continues to disrupt production, distribution and consumption of food in many ways. And the closing of borders, shortage of farm workers, queues at supermarkets, food banks, increasing emphasis on food safety, particularly when it's like looking at packaging and um, looking at how fresh product has related here, here. You're seeing substantial global shifts to how consumers who are rethinking how they shop for food, how they cook food and the types of food that they eat. And that's without even starting to mention the shifting food trends among consumers. The introduction of innovative agriculture technologies and the increasing importance of e-commerce. So into the future, these are the trends that are all set to reshape how consumers, whether they're Irish or whether they're global, will purchase food and drink ingredients and products. And I guess, but despite the emergence of all of these global trends, achieving sustainable resource consumption is by far and away the most significant challenge facing the global food and drink industry. Today, the global food industry, and, and these figures ref reference not Ireland, but the global food industry, is directly responsible for 29% of total greenhouse gas, 66% of total packaging waste, 31,000 square miles of deforestation every year, and 70% of fresh water use. Yet by 2050, global food requirements will need to double in order to feed the growing population and the growing middle class. So if this increased food demand isn't met through sustainable agricultural intensification, we will see a further depletion of the world's finite natural resources and a reduction in the yields of key agricultural crops as a result of the accelerated impacts of global climate change. So in response to the threat posed by the overconsumption of resources and the accelerating impacts of climate change, global food companies, whether they're uh, food and drink companies, are looking beyond the traditional business metrics of production, profit and growth. And they're incorporating new metrics that measure the environment and the resource use of the, the, their resource use and the footprint of their supply chains. And what we're seeing is global food and drink companies setting out ambitious sustainability plans to mitigate their exposure to sustainability risks within their supply chain. However, the one commonality amongst all of the company's plans is that they can't do it alone. They're actually in, hugely dependent on ident identifying the correct suppliers and supply chains who are willing to implement these companies' sustainability visions. And in, in Borbia then, through customer research we conducted back in 2009 and again in 2018, our leading global customers have told us that their single biggest issue now and long into the future is going to be sustainability. So in response to this market demand, that's when we launched Origin Green, the world's first national food and drink sustainability programme. It's a voluntary programme led by Borbia, but it brings together our food industry, from farmers to food producers, retailers to food service operators, and it's with the common goal of sustainable food production. This programme enables Ireland's food industry to assess and achieve measurable sustainability targets that respect the environment and serve local communities more effectively. Crucially though, Origin Green is about measuring and improving how we can do this on an ongoing basis. And by undertaking this programme, we not only want to create a better future, but really importantly, we want to create a significant point of differentiation for the Irish food and drink industry around the area of sustainability. So from the outset, Origin Green has, has placed huge emphasis on collaboration and collaboration for impact, as the title of my presentation is indicating. The ongoing assistance and involvement of a range of organisations and stakeholders ensures the successful implementation and development of the programme. Because as Origin Green grows, so too does, does the importance of the specialised knowledge that these agencies and organisations can bring to developing the programme. And I want to bring to life a few examples of this. So driving and mapping improved producer sustainability performance under Origin Green is undertaken through the Borbia Sustainable Assurance Schemes. And these schemes have been designed to track farming practices, record data to demonstrate the sustainability of Irish farming in a systematic way at an individual farm level. And that therefore can provide the necessary proof to customers that Irish farm produce has been produced under sustainability and quality assurance criteria. The schemes are built on best practice in farming and processing, 
current legislation, relevant industry guidelines and international standards, and it's all accredited to ISO 17065. Under the schemes, the audits are conducted by an independent auditor on every scheme member's farm at 18 month intervals, and a comprehensive report is produced on the performance of the farm under the schemes criteria. I'll touch on some of that in a moment. But the majority of total Irish production is covered by the sustainable assurance schemes. 53,000 producers are members of the schemes, and that's right the way across uh, beef, dairy, eggs, horticulture and lamb. And you can see some of the statistics there of 92% of beef, 95% of dairy. But it's importantly, it's really important to note that these schemes aren't developed just by Borbia. Again, it's in collaboration with all key representatives from within the specific sector through technical advisory committees. And these committees are made up of representatives from Borbia, from farm organizations, TAGUS, the Food Safety Authority, the Department of Agriculture, and again, technical experts. But the key focus of Origin Green at farm level is providing participating farmers with feedback and advice that can help reduce their carbon footprint and also boost the farm's financial performance, as typically there's a really close correlation between the two. And this led us to the launch of our Carbon Navigator, again, a software tool developed by Tagusk and Borbia to help beef and dairy farmers implement measures that can drive farm profitability, because that's really a, an important element of this, but at the same time, enhancing environmental performance. And the Carbon Navigator tool looks at practical data day management practices that are relevant to farmers as they run their enterprise and helps identify the potential impact both financially and environmentally for further improving performance. And it's through this system of measuring and comparative feedback that Origin Green identifies steps to increase farm resource efficiency and therefore demonstrates to farmers that sustainable farming and efficient farming go hand in hand in safeguarding their farm business and the environment for future generations. And following that on-farm assessment, each farm then receives an individual feedback report and outlines their current performance relative to their peers, which includes summaries of carbon footprint, greenhouse gases, nutrient management, etc. But the report data will compare current farm performance against changes since the last audit and similar production systems. And the purpose of this farmer feedback report is again to demonstrate to members how their farm inputs and activities contributes to greenhouse gas production. And also then it contains advice and feedback on how to mitigate against these emissions and improve production efficiency. And the advisory feedback, again, is done in collaboration with TAGISC and fo focuses on the measures that are set out in the TAGISC MAC curve. But since the commencement of uh, carbon footprinting assessments, we've generated 260,000 carbon footprint results now on beef and dairy farms. And the assessment results to date show a continued decline in the carbon footprint intensity related to the production of beef and dairy. So on beef farms that joined the Sustainable Beef Assurance Scheme in 2014, we've recorded a 5% average reduction in CO2 per unit of beef produced. On dairy farms, those who joined the ESTAS in 2014, we've recorded a 9% average reduction in CO2 per unit of milk produced on their farms and the results to date highlight the fact that a considerable proportion of farms have performed well in reducing their carbon footprint the challenge going forward is for farms that have a higher carbon footprint to adapt the practices and the best performing farms to maximize their resource efficiency but the ability to generate a carbon footprint on for farms on an individual basis has also been aided by collaboration with the ICBF, the Department of Agriculture, who, and this is an important piece, who always with farmers' consent, no data is ever shared without a farmer's consent, but they share data with Borbia to aid the footprinting process, but also that allows for significant time savings when we're on farms to ensure that we're not, double, we're not going back over data with a farmer. But I could go through all of the different collaborations on farm sustainability that we're involved with across a host of sustainability areas, but obviously today I won't have time to do it. But I've included this slide just to make you aware of the breadth of the sustainability projects that Origin Green is involved with and to provide an open invitation to external parties that were open and willing to discuss scalable farm sustainability improvements. But I guess before I finish, I wanted to just remind the audience of why Borbia has invested time and monetary resources in driving collaborative farming sustainability practices. And this is to deliver key sustainability criteria that Ireland's international food and drink customers are demanding if they're going to continue to preferentially source Irish food and drink products. One of the most recent cornerstone initiatives is to differentiate Irish food and drink ingredients based on the earned sustainability credentials delivered to Origin Green's collaborative farm sustainability infrastructure. And that's been the launch of the new grass fed standard, believed again to be a world first of such a standard rolled out on a national scale. And again, you can see the statistics here as to why we do this. Consumers around the world believe that grass fed is desirable and worth paying for. 
We can see this, whether it's meat or dairy, we can see from a sustainability perspective, there's an emerging trend that sustainable beef is associated with grass fed cattle. And these are facts and, and, and a zone that Ireland is very comfortable in speaking to. Similarly, grass fed is viewed as more natural for the consumers that we're looking to speak to. And those consumers are prepared to pay more for that natural global uh, tendance. And I guess what we're looking to do is to develop a response to these increasing demands from the marketplace for products that can be verified as grass fed. It's no point, there's no longer possible to just declare, trust me, this is a grass fed product. The demand is for evidence to support the claim. So the grass fed beef and dairy standards have been developed again in consultation with stakeholders from the across the agri-food sector. And the term grass fed for both beef and dairy means that the diet of the animal was composed of at least 90% of grass or grass forage on a fresh weight basis for every year throughout the lifetime of the animal. In addition, for a pool of milk to qualify as grass fed, it's on an average of 95% on fresh weight basis is required again. With growth, both the grass fed standards within the scheme have now been approved by INAB and form part of the Borbia accreditation schedule under the ISO again. But I guess if you look forward, um, we're, we're, we know that all of our collaborations will need to keep developing and develop new strategies and programmes because the world isn't stopping. You've had the recently launched EU farm to fork strategy, and this obviously has a complementary biodiversity strategy. They've all got ambitious time bound sustainability improvements required by e each EU member state. And closer to home, we know that the climate agenda is at the centre of the programme for government and the climate bill that was published. Set, and that's obviously looking for us to be climate neutral by 2050. You've got youth climate change activism across the world demanding urgent action from political leaders. You've got consumers who want to play their part. They want to know where their food comes from and how it can, is made and they want to live responsibly. They have demands of the agri-food industry that they want transparency on how the supply chain is operating and they want farms, they want the industry to improve on sustainability levels. And in addition to that, we have to be mindful that we have to engage with conventional and new social media platforms to ensure that society's food choices are informed with the most relevant scientific thinking. And I guess from a Borbia perspective, the biggest challenge we face is ensuring a market reward for the sustainability efforts and ensuring farmers and companies buy into this. And these are the two challenges that are intrinsically linked. Because despite all our progress, Borbia, alongside our farmers and collaborative partners, we're fully aware that much further farm sustainability improvement is going to be required. 82% of Irish farmers in a recent Borbia survey flagged that they believe that farming practices need to change in the next three years. You can also see that 47% um, of Irish farmers believe that the sector needs to become more sustainable over the next three years as well. And to be holistic in our efforts, it's clear that a centralised sustainability approach is necessary to drive the scale of change within the industry. We're looking at drivers through three pillars. We're looking at the market, scientific expertise and policy and regulation. And without these enablers coming together to support orange and green at farm level, we're not going to be able to monitor and assist the farming community to make the sustainable farm improvements that are required. Ultimately, again, this is through collaboration with key agencies across the, across, uh, the supply chain so that we can deliver what's being asked of high quality, responsibly farmed food and drink and bring this to the market where we know it should be appreciated and get the recognition for that. I guess in closing, Justin, when we speak of the collaboration that's required, fundamentally, we believe that coming together is the beginning. Keeping together is obviously progress, but it's working together is where we fundamentally need to get success for success. I leave it at that. Thank you very much. Tara, thank you very much for that. And uh, really appreciate you keep keeping on time, Tara. Maybe if I could use the luxury of the chair, maybe just for one or two quick questions before we let you go. And I'm conscious a lot of farmers listening to this and having having had a, a pre-conference discussion with William, uh, who's on our panel later, it's all about knowing what's coming down the track. And if I could ask you maybe the insights that Borbia have and that you have in relation to markets, do you think in 10 years time that for example, milk price will just be determined as it is at the minute based on uh, fats and proteins, or will there be a, a, a connection to that sustainability? Okay, we're seeing a small element through some processors with Estas, but do you see that being much wider that, that the, the price or the value of the milk from a cow will not just be about volume and fats and proteins, it'll be about this sustainability environmental credentials as well that consumers are actually prepared to pay for? 
We do, Justin, um, and fundamentally we believe that um, increasingly that transparency is going to be demanded. And there's a two way flow on this, Justin. Um, there will be the very license to operate so that consumers will be, we believe, prepared to pay, but they will be demanding for what they're paying for. And as I mentioned with that grass fed that we were speaking to, they will demand transparency. They will demand verification of every commitment and promise that we're giving. So with that, what we hope willingness to, to pay will be an insistence on systems and verification systems behind that. And what we're finding just increasingly is that there's a voracious appetite for that transparency and proof points. And what we're trying to navigate is to make sure that the balance of willingness to pay is equally voracious on behalf of the um, on behalf of Irish farmers when we're putting our credentials forward. We have a unique set of credentials around the world. What we're now looking to say is but can we position ourselves at the premium end of the market in order to harvest those credentials well? All right, just a final question, and I'd just be interested in getting your views on how bored be you? Like you talk, the, the picture you present of Irish farming and the sustainability and the willingness of farmers to move forward and address the sustainability challenges, and I've no doubt that will come out later in our panel. But how do you react to some of the negative uh, publicity that our sector gets? And you, you would think at times that we are running slurry into rivers and, and X, Y, and Z. Uh, you paint a very different picture. And it's a picture that I would be familiar with coming, going on to farms every day of the week and, and whatnot. But how do you respond to that? I guess I, I'm a data driven person, Justin. And when I look to the facts and figures that we have, I will always go to data. So. Mm. Uh, we would always be challenged and, and we would have really robust conversations with our farming stakeholders about Borbias visiting on farms, the audit process. But I would say that the audit process for our farming community is the biggest friend that we have yeah. because we are an independently accredited agency that is now able to give the proof points that one might have an extreme example that will be taken and shown over and over again. I have 53,000 examples of how farming is behaving and the proof points that we can bring to the marketplace. Now, that is not to paint a fool's paradise, Justin. We will continuously have to get better. The world is going to demand more of us and we will need to act as one. And I think I, I, that was why we very purposely put the theme of today's presentation as collaboration. This is not a board be a gig. This is not farmers being isolated. This is our industry working as one because it's only when we are divided that we're conquered, but it's when we're acting as one with streamlined processes and data sets that we can stand over, that's when we can put our best foot forward. I think that's a very uh, strong, strong closing statement uh, and, and one that I'm sure a lot of us would agree. And it, it is fantastic to see that level of collaboration and robust challenge as well that often takes place in order to make sure we're, we're, we're going in the right direction. And I know Board B are an organization that uh, is the envy of many other countries in terms of the amount of data that we collect, the market insights that you guys provide, and that, uh, I suppose, cohesion right from the market right back down to farm gates. So well, well done on that. Tara, Look, thank you very much for your time this morning.